This video is on the general characteristics of fungi. So there are approximately 80,000 species of fungi, 400 of which are medically important. And out of this 400, less than 50 cause 90% of all mycosis are fungal infections. This means that we do not really need to memorize all fungal species. We just need to know the most common ones which cause disease in humans. Most fungi are actually beneficial to humankind. Some of them have been used in the production of food, like cheese, as well as in the production of spirits. Uh, they are also used in the production of antibiotics, like for example, penicillin. Let us describe your fungi. Fungi are eukaryotic, meaning they have true nuclei. As well as, they are also present with membrane and closed organelles. Like for example, mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum. They could either be obligate or facultative aerobes. And they're described to be chemoheterotrophs. These are actually two terms which have been joined together. Fungi are chemotrophic, meaning they derive their energy from chemical reactions. And they are heterotrophic, meaning they are not capable of synthesizing their own food. This would be in contrast to phototrophs. Phototrophs derive their energy from sunlight, okay, in the process of photosynthesis, like plants. The opposite term of heterotroph, on the other hand, would be lithotroph. These organisms are capable of producing their own food by getting carbon from inorganic sources, like, for example, carbon dioxide. Fungi could either be uninucleate or multinucleate, and they are non-motil. They will not have flagella like some bacteria. So this table compares fungi from bacteria. When it comes to size, fungi would obviously be larger. The nucleus is only present in the fungi since the fungi are eukaryotic, whereas bacteria are prokaryotic. As for the cytoplasm, uh, mitochondria and endoplasmic, and endoplasmic reticulum would be present in fungi but absent in bacteria since bacteria are, again, prokaryotic. Both fungi and bacteria will have cell membranes. The difference would be in fungi, you have sterols which are present. Okay? In bacteria, there would be no sterols. An example of a sterol present in fungi would be ergosterol. Okay. Again, bacteria will not have sterols. However, there are exemptions. Like for example, mycoplasma and ureaplasma. These are bacteria okay, which have sterols in their cell membrane. These are actually the cell wall-less bacteria. Both fungi and bacteria uh, have cell walls. The difference would be in the composition. Fungi have chitin in their uh, cell wall, whereas bacteria will have peptidoglycan. Both fungi and bacteria can produce spores. However, the spores of fungi are used for reproduction, whereas the spores for bacteria are used for survival. Okay? not for your production. So genera uh, capable of producing endospores would include your bacillus and clostridium. Thermal dimorphism could be possible for some fungi. Thermal dimorphism means that uh, some fungi could exist either as yeast or mold depending on environmental conditions. Okay. When it comes to metabolism, fungi require organic carbon, and again, there are no obligate anaerobic fungi, whereas bacteria, many of them do not require organic carbon. 
So these are the two basic growth forms of fungi. Fungi could either be molds or found as yeasts. Molds are, uh, are found as multicellular branching cylindrical tubules called hyphae. And a mass of intertwined hyphae are called mycelium, plural mycelia. Hyphae could either be septate or acetate. When you say septate hyphae, these are hyphae with partitions or septa, which are almost regularly spaced. Whereas when you say acetate, the hyphae will not have septa. Hyphae could also be classified either as vegetative or aerial. The vegetative hyphae are the ones uh, responsible for absorbing nutrients. So somehow you can think of this as uh, like the roots of trees. Aerial hyphae, on the other hand, are protruding and they usually bear the reproductive uh, apparatus of the fungi, like the spores. So if this is your culture medium, the vegetative hyphae would be like the roots, which anchor the uh, fungi, whereas the aerial hyphae are protruding and this would bear the spores. Okay. Now, yeasts are the unicellular forms. They are, uh, they are produced by budding, wherein you have a mother cell which pinches slowly, producing a daughter cell. Then this eventually separates from the mother cell, producing now two separate cells. So that's the process of budding. Now, sometimes a mother cell fails to separate or to, uh, fails to detach completely from its daughter cell. Okay. Then eventually, budding occurs again. Then there's again failure of detachment. So what happens is, what's ha what happens is, you produce an elongated structure, which we call a pseudo-hyphae. So it is important for us to recognize pseudo-hyphae since your pseudo-hyphae might be mistaken as germ tubes okay? in what you call the germ tube test used to identify uh, candida albicans. So as you can see, pseudo-hyphae will have constrictions which should not be present, should not be present in true hyphae. So most hyphae are divided into septa and they are described to be septate. Some species are dimorphic. Again, they could exist either as molds or yeast depending on the temperature or depending on the environmental condition. Molds would usually exist in environmental uh, conditions or at room temperature, whereas yeast would exist inside the uh, human body okay? or, at room, uh, or at body temperature. Fungi have an essential rigid cell wall and some of the cell walls contain melanin. The cell walls containing melanin are described to be the matiaceous. So this would be an illustration of the two types of hyphae, aerial hyphae and vegetative hyphae. Then you have here the two types of hyphae based on the presence or absence of septa. So you have here your septate hyphae Okay, and your acetate hyphae. Another term for acetate would actually be sinocytic. Okay. An example of a sinocytic fungi would be those fungi found in order mucoralis. Okay. Then in the middle picture, you will see the growth of a hypha from a spore. Then here on the right, you will see the difference between a true hyphae and a pseudo hyphae. Again, in your pseudo hyphae, you will find constrictions brought about by the process of budding. Whereas in true hyphae, there would no, uh, there be no uh, partitions or constrictions.